How's that beer? Cold and nice. It's pretty cool. It's like in the Bahamas, it's always so hard to find beers and stuff, but here provisions come to you so easily between the vegetable boat and the guna. Like everything is kind of geared to making life a little bit easy out here, which is pretty cool. I know. Because we're remote, but not that remote. Yeah, exactly. It's a perfect way to describe it. We just decided that we're gonna move spots today and explore a different island about six miles away. And we might be able to sail, do a nice downwind sail. Brian and Kaz are going too. So we're looking forward to exploring something new, even though this island is amazing. I'm not really ready to leave, but at the same time, like, it's always fun we've actually here. been here for a few a days week. now. <laughs> so yeah, it's time to move on. <laughs> Boats. Something's always broken. At least it's not going to stop us from sailing today. We're exploring the beautiful San Blas Islands, having been here for over a week now. Just soaking up the sun and enjoying the pristine beaches with our friends. The anchorage we're leaving is incredibly picturesque, but it's time to check out a new spot. So today we're making the short hop over to a different island.
think ideally, if you're really weak, you head up into the wind and let it loft the waves as fast as you can. Yeah. It's just it's just so much more stable to work when the jib is out and the boat is not rolling and pitching. So we have the link one in from our last sail, and we're gonna be turning more downwind, so we don't need the reef, uh, which is this fold here that makes the sail smaller. I know. Now she told me I should wait until you anchored. I was like, nah, I'm going to be professional. Well, I'm just going to be circling around trying to find something not 50 feet deep. Oh. That sucks, dude. I don't know. The, yeah, right. the power of the relay is there. The power of the relay is like 8, 16 meters back there, I think. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm... It was in 12 when you dropped it. Let's see the anchor. I started troubleshooting, so I started at the battery bank and tested the voltages at the battery and the circuit breaker, and then I moved my way to the control box, and then this is the hardest one to access because it's these stupid little set screws inside the anchor locker, but I decided to go check that out, and um, I found loose connections right here. These connections have come loose. Um, these probably should be lock washers, but that's not what was provided, and these are metric, so I don't have metric lock nuts in that size, but something to add to the list. I'm trying to find out why our windlass didn't work this morning. The wiring is pretty complex, so I actually created a diagram to help me troubleshoot and isolate potential connection issues. The connection at the battery and control box were fine, and I also had voltage at the windlass remote. Once I got to the motor, I discovered the loose wires. So we built this um, to replace a remote, and so the first thing we did earlier today when we were trying to lift the anchor was basically tear into this box, and now 
you assume the thing you changed most recently it would be the issue. Yeah. Typ so. That's typically how it goes, right? So it's completely unrelated is the bottom line, and so Bill's gonna fix that now, what he already had done. Yep. And, but I mean, the good thing is our windlass works because Sandblast has a lot of deep anchorages, and we were getting a little nervous, thinking like, yeah, it was harder. It's almost we like just a, got here. We are not ready to go. It's almost like a safety thing too, the windlass. Like I, I don't know. Like it just it feels sketchy not having the ability to pick up your anchor easily. Yeah. Like if you have to move the boat or a squall comes through, like it's so hard to lift this heavy chain and heavy anchor up. Um, that I think it just makes sense to have a windlass for us living on anchor. So I'm glad I was able to sort that out. Yeah. Now I've got to get all this back together. These, I remember these being a real pain in about these set screws. I kind of remember that too. Because the thing is, like, you can't spin the Allen key past this, so you have to like take it in and out every time. So I'm pretty excited because we're heading to a beach barbecue with all our fellow sailors. We haven't done that in a while, so that's pretty fun. And your windlass is fixed, so. And my windlass is fixed, so I'm celebrating. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. I've been out watching the Guna while I was trying to fix the windlass. I was watching them troll the hand line up and down the reef in a sailing Cayuga, like a sailing canoe. It's kind of cool to see like a traditional method of fishing under sail. It's pretty cool. So this beach is known for being able to stern tie um, this island. Well, yeah, this island on this side of the beach <laughs> um, because it's deep, really deep all the way up to the shore. So it's shallow for maybe five feet and then it goes to be like 30 feet. You can see we didn't even have to tilt up the motors to come in. We could just try the thingy right up on the beach without tilting motors. Yeah, that's pretty cool. There's nugs. Making some chicken. I'm making some uh, chicken, some zucchini on the fire. Oh, wow. <laughs> Beach. Doing there, huh? Making some bread. Ooh. You know we're in a deserted island if we're making bread. Yeah. We don't actually need to. We have bread, but we decided this would be fun to heat up over the campfire. We're we gonna... actually don't have that much bread left. True. Really. We're getting pretty low, and the, the vegetable boats that have come by a couple times have not had any bread. So it's okay. Mm -hmm. So we're trying focaccia for the first time. We made a lot of bread in our day, but never focaccia. And I think we're gonna try baking it here and then bring it in to the fire tonight to kind of complete the bake so it's nice and warm and we can give it out to all our new friends we've met on the beach. So, I'm gonna 
visualize. I know you're supposed to put a good amount of oil in focaccia. I'm thinking we'll just... How do you feel like it's going to be So we're going to go walk to the end of this beach where the Kuna people are living and have their homes. Um, the Kuna on this island are really, really friendly with um, Pringos <laughs> and they have some of their molas for sale, which we already bought some of those. Um, what we're interested in today is just getting some cervezas, <laughs> cervezas <laughs> for Bill. Um, and I might get another bracelet because I've collected a couple, but I don't know. The Kuna wear the them all up their arms and stuff, and it's really it's pretty inspiring. Hola. 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 Donde esta la cerveza? <laughs> I saw it earlier, I thought. Did you see it here? Or is it on the other? out there. Maybe there's one of the huts down. Might have gone to the wrong hut, maybe. What a crazy place to live, though, huh? Can like, you imagine? Imagine this is your front yard. It wouldn't be the worst in the world, would it? Okay, so we're gonna see if the cervezas are down this. I've seen people this do this hut. successfully at the bonfires. They leave at the five dollars, they come back in five beers. I hear the prices vary based off of who you are. <laughs> I did it. I found it. Yeah. But it was $2 for me instead of one. But that's fine. It helps the local community. I'm not going to go crazy over $2. Yeah, and it seems like um, it's kind of hard to be sure, but I don't think she wanted me to film her. So I decided not to film at all. <laughs> yeah, we decided to. Yeah. You got to be careful. You don't want to disrespect people. Yeah. Well, and there's also a language barrier because the indigenous people here actually speak Guna. Yeah, not Spanish. They don't speak, yeah, they do speak some Spanish, but that's not their primary. So, yeah, communication <laughs> can be hard. Exactly. Sound. It's like Coors Light. <laughs> that's it. Like, it doesn't taste like. I mean, it's not a bad beer. Ooh, that's cold. <laughs> It's like in the Bahamas, it's always so hard to find beers and stuff, but here provisions come to you so easily between the vegetable boat and the guna. Like everything is kind of geared to making life a little bit easy out here, which is pretty cool. I know. Because we're I remote, but not that remote. Yeah, exactly. It's a perfect way to describe it. Like remote, you have the feel of the Bahamas, but like you don't have like that. Louder. You don't have that like cost associated with it. Um, so it's pretty cool here. I'm pretty impressed. 